Assalamu alaikum. Um, it is a pleasure to be here with you all. Uh, some of you may think that, um, that's before now, uh, some of you may think I'm a cartoon character myself. Uh, I'm sorry to disappoint you, I'm a human being, <laughs> as you can see. So um, today I would like to talk to us about what I do as an editorial cartoonist um, in helping or, um, how do I put it now, pursuit of good governance. You see, from the beginning of time, when man decided to live in maybe organized societies, um, man decided that um, there's the need for maybe assignment rules, assignments of roles, uh, responsibilities. So we have leaders, we have followers, and all of that. And um, with time, um, the need for accountability, because as you have your leaders, you expect your leaders to do certain things for you, and then also the followers are expected to do uh, certain things. And as, you know, time kept going, uh, we got to a stage where, for example, we're now in a democracy, say in Nigeria. And um, in countries where democracy is being practiced, um, there's uh, that need for accountability. There's more need for accountability from the leaders. And then came the media. You know, where the, the media as, uh, uh, acts as a bridge between the government and the people. Uh, the media tells the people what the government is doing. At the same time, the media tells the government what the people want, what the people are going through and all of that. Um, what the government is not doing, what the government is not able to do, and like that, back and forth. Now, in the media, there's this small cluster of uh, people called editorial cartoonists. Editorial cartoonists, they don't write, you know, the news. They don't make the news, but they make commentary about the news. Yeah, sometimes we make the news as well. Uh, when an editorial cartoonist is jailed or when the first lady reacts to a cartoon and it's all over the media. We sometimes make the news. But our core objective is to make comment, to talk about what people are feeling, a kind of feedback, what people feel about certain government policy or what people need or how, um, you know, the society is being run and all of that. Uh, interestingly, it's not just about the government. The cartoonists also turn around and look at the people. Maybe what the people are doing maybe wrongly and all of that. So, um, the editorial cartoonist basically tries to hold the government accountable. Why is this so important? Why, why is it that a lot of people know editorial cartoonists, for example, Bulama, and they don't know many um, maybe uh, columnists, maybe by name. It's simple. We're living in a world where people, you know, um, have short uh, attention span, sort of. People are always moving. People are, you know, very few people have the time to sit down and read long articles, right? So sometimes as an editorial cartoonist, what we do um, when we look at the opinions of people and what people are saying on a particular issue, we bring it out in a very small, just a small piece of cartoon where you could just read it within seconds and you get what we're saying, right? And also it's very important because um, our leaders also always moving around, jumping from one meeting to another, but when they see a cartoon, a simple cartoon, you know, it, says, it sends the message. Like this one, for example. Can we go back a bit? This one. Um, this cartoon, I made this cartoon for um, you know, the beginning of this 
administration, you know, after winning the elections and all of that. And uh, we know how the first tenure went. A lot of promises were not fulfilled and all of that. And as you know, the popular uh, chronicle of the green car, here they are at the... <laughs> yeah, so here this government has reached the next level and there's a sign, you know, welcome to the next level. Here, promises must be fulfilled, you know, incompetence and blaming of previous governments are not allowed because, of course, they are the previous government now. So, um, we are now saying, okay, we voted you again, all right, we are giving you a second chance, but you have to fulfill your, your, your promise. It's a simple cartoon, it didn't take me more than 30 minutes to make this, but it sends the message. Next slide. Okay, now, in a lot of the things that, uh, you know, the promises that were made, I'm just giving an example with this current government. Corruption is one of them, right? And uh, we know in Nigeria, a lot of, it's like corruption is a tree with a lot of branches and all of that. You know, you find corruption everywhere. Here we see the president or the government trying, you know, to cut down corruption. But, you know, people who are who really, really understand some of these cartoons I make beyond just what is apparent will probably notice that they're just cutting the tree, but the roots are there. So it will still grow up. You get. So it will still come up. So unless you dig out the tree and get it out, you know, we'll still be here mid next, uh, who knows, uh, next cartoon. Okay, part of the promises that every, almost every politician, every government comes, it's okay, we're going to give you good roads and all of that. But there are roads that have been uh, since when, I can't even say, more than a decade, and they're still the way they are today in Nigeria. And people are dying all the time, you know, accidents everywhere. And you wonder, you see maybe uh, one, one project, construction project, one contract after another, on the same road, over and over and over again and yet the road is not fixed and still people are dying right so my role as an editorial cartoonist is to tell the government that look this is not uh this is not good this is what people are feeling and all of that why do we do this we're talking about good governance good governance effective use of resources, right? The resources of a country, the resources belonging to the people, how the government effectively utilize these resources, you know, for the betterment of the people, right? So when you find yourself in a situation where the government is not using these resources or maybe with impunity and what have you, you find problems coming up. You start having conflicts. Let's go to the next slide. Right? Here we have a situation, for example, um, there are people in the southwest who wanted, you know, the June 12, they had a lot of issues that need to be addressed. The people in the southeast, they also have their own issue, you know, they've not become, you no, know, they've not had a president in the southeast for a very long time. There's the issue of civil war and all of that. And then behind there is the north. You know, with our poor education, with the poverty, with the insecurity, and we have the largest votes. We always give the largest votes, but you know, we're there somewhere, and I think we're still the way we are there. We're still the way we are. Right. Next slide. So, this is one of the things, you know, we're talking about. We just talked about the Ruga, we talked about the Fulani and everything. You know, people in rural communities are dying every day because they are not on social media, they are not on Twitter. They don't have voices, right? You just see a headline, uh, 52 people killed in Soso village and that's all. Who are these 52 people? They are human beings. You know, and uh, you know, the bandits and all of that, they're having a field day, they do it and they, 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 they go away and nothing happens. So we keep talking about these things. You have, uh, we have Sokoto, we have Katana, we have, you know, not worse completely everything. Next slide. Okay, so still the issue of insecurity, uh, the green car surrounded by insecurity. Next slide. Still the issue of insecurity. Where you have your government warning bandits warning terrorists you better stop what we are doing we are not happy with what you are doing and these people you kept warning and you keep saying you take action you know your days are numbered but you know 
it's it's like action speak louder than words, right? So um, when you talk about these things, you throw warnings and all of that, and nothing is done. Well, they continue doing what they are doing with impunity. This guy is like, oh, is he talking to us? Oh, I, I don't know. I think he's talking to you. You know, that kind of a thing. They don't care anymore. They just do what they do. Next slide. So it's not just about the bandits and all of that. We also have uh, abuse in the agencies and institutions we have, where we have a justice system, uh, a court will give a court order saying, okay, this person should be given bail, should be released and all of that. And you find institutions of government disobeying the court order. We are not talking about whether the person is guilty or not. As far as the court says, let this guy go. You know, we are living in civilized societies. There has to be accountability. You have to let this man go. And if you don't respect the court, how do you expect the people to respect the law and order? You know, we'll continue having problems.